Dozens of Southpaws. I'm going to quickly review some of the aspects of brachycephalic airway disease that we have to deal with in our practice. And um, I'll go ahead and get started. So brachycephalic means obviously short nose. And so the dogs that are going to have these issues are dogs and cats are dogs that have pushed in faces. And so your pugs, um, uh, French Bulldogs, Boston Terriers, English Bulldogs, uh, things like that. And occasionally we will see Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and Maltese and a few other breeds as well. So there's several components of brachycephalic airway disease. Um, and so the first one that we think about is um, the airway component, um, which relates to obstruction of the upper airway. And then the, uh, there are other issues related to gastrointestinal signs as well. And I'll review those very quickly as well. Um, we do have neurologic uh, issues, usually um, spinal issues that brachycephalics get. Um, and then there's some orthopedic problems that they can get as well. So as far as the airway is concerned, um, that's the thing that we most commonly see. We have uh, uh, five different components of the airway uh, syndrome. And so we'll number those one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm just going to see what my comments are. Uh, okay. And uh, so somebody commented hemivertebrae, which is exactly correct. Um, so the first thing that we think about going from rostral to caudal is stenotic nares. And so with stenotic nares, when you have your ailer fold here, and this is the airway here, the passage uh, where, uh, where air can pass through, um, and dogs that have stenotic nares, they look kind of like this. I'm just drop that a little better. Um, so like this, and then the actual airway itself is very occluded. And so they sound like when they're trying to breathe. And so the way that we fix these, you guys have seen these in my live streams, so that we take a wedge of tissue out here and then close that up primarily. Um, I use a simple continuous suture pattern and that's gonna give you uh, that appearance when we're finished. So stenotic areas are a, um, a primary problem and they're easily managed. Um, and a lot of dogs that have brachycephalic airway syndrome are going to have stenotic nares, and so that's one of the first things that we tend to repair. It's something that's fa fairly straightforward. The risks are low, um, and so that's probably a good idea to repair in most of our patients. This is considered to be a primary problem. And by telling you that this is primary, you're going to get the idea that maybe some of these are secondary. So the next one that we see is um, elongated soft palate. And that is also a primary issue. And what that looks like is if we did a cross section or a sagittal section of the dog's head like this with its eyes up here, you have the hard palate like that. And then you have the soft palate, which extends back like this. And the problem is with these guys is that the soft palate can interfere with the larynx so that's the larynx and the windpipe there, and can also it can actually occlude that airway, um, and um, and so we have two choices with our elongated soft palate. We can either cut it off like this, and when you cut it off like that, you can either do that as a sutured or a cut and suture technique, or you can use a vessel sealer like a ligature. And I tend to use the vessel sealing technique because it's so fast and I know that when you go back and look in these a few weeks after surgery that they can look kind of um, kind of necrotic or nasty but clinically we find that they do really well somebody has commented whether you can use laser with these and you, you definitely can use laser uh, in this situation so the other way that we can manage an elongated soft palate particularly in dogs where um, the soft palate is very thickened, we can do what's called a folded flat palatoplasty. So if that's the soft palate like this, instead of cutting it off here, what we're going to do is we're going to take out the majority of the thickness of the soft palate 
and then bring that up and fold it forward so that what we get afterward is something that looks like this. And then this is sutured up here. And the advantage of that is that we are not only shortening the soft palate, but we're also reducing the thickness of the soft palate, which is going to improve our outcome in some of our patients. Uh, again, somebody commented with laser, you can certainly use laser to cut the soft palate. Um, when you're looking at a folded flat palatoplasty from the back, I mean from the front, you have your tonsils like this. The tongue is down here and then the soft palate is kind of hanging down like this. What we do is we'll bring the soft palate up to see where it naturally wants to sit and then we're going to use scissors and electric cautery or coblation or something to trim all of that tissue out and then we're going to bring this part of the soft palate up and suture up here. Okay, so uh, folded flat palatoplasty. Now the next two that can also be combined as one um, called laryngeal collapse. And laryngeal collapse is um, a secondary problem that we have in brachycephalic airway dogs. And, um, and the reason why that happens is that the, um, uh, the larynx, because of the, the suction, so if this is the larynx here, epiglottis there, soft palate is here, trachea is there, the suction that we are creating to breathe, sorry, to breathe air in that's been obstructed by that soft palate, um, the larynx can kind of implode on itself. And so low grade laryngeal collapse, if we're looking in the airway like this, epiglottis is here, the laryngeal saccules that are supposed to be out here with the suction in the airway can evert and occlude the airway like that. And so that's, um, that's called a grade one laryngeal collapse. And that is associated with um, usually a, a moderate to marked increase in respiratory uh, signs um, and can easily be resolved by going in and trimming out those laryngeal saccules. And so in all brachycephalic airway dogs, I strongly recommend that the saccules are assessed and removed if possible or if necessary. Now, as you get farther along, you can have collapse of the entire larynx. So low-grade laryngeal collapse is when you have, I think, believe these are the corn, uh, cuneiform processes, is when these start crossing over. And then when you have the corniculate processes up here, when they start, sorry, that's corniculate. When the cuneiform cross, processes here start crossing over, that's a grade three laryngeal collapse. Now, there isn't a lot surgically that we can do for grade three laryngeal collapse other than, than to correct these other primary problems and just hope that we're going to reduce the negative pressure in the airway um, associated with breathing. And then the last component of brachycephalic airway syndrome of the airway portion of it is um, stenotic trachea or tracheal stenosis. And what we see with that is when you take a lateral radiograph, if the trachea is supposed to look like this, with these guys, the trachea can look like this. And that in itself can cause some respiratory issues, but um, you also can have what's called ciliary dyskinesia, which is where the ciliary, the mucous ciliary escalator that's along the mucosal lining that's supposed to transport mucus up into the pharynx so that it can be swallowed, um, that mucus ciliary escalator doesn't work, and so these dogs are prone to recurrent pneumonia. And if you have a young brachycephalic puppy that has pneumonia, likely associated with this uh, st uh, tracheal stenosis, the prognosis for that dog is quite poor. And so you, the owners need to be aware that this is going to be a recurrent problem. Now, adding on to this, let's add a sixth one, which is the gastrointestinal signs. And the gastrointestinal signs are associated with, so if you have the diaphragm here and you have the trachea there and you've occluded the airway up here, when you're trying to suck air down this way, you're also going to suck gastric contents into the esophagus. And so in one study, about 95% of brachycephalic dogs had gastroesophageal ulceration even if they didn't show clinical signs. And so what we find is if we treat those dogs preventatively 
with a, uh, a proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole, um, that these dogs are going to do better um, with their um, airway disease. And then also the airway disease resolving those obstructive issues are going to resolve the gastroesophageal ulcers as well. So all of these guys should be put on omeprazole. We put them on for a couple of weeks. Some people put them on for a really extended period of time. Uh, and that's it for the airway and gastrointestinal issues. And then we also can have spinal issues that are not related with brachycephalic airway disease, but spinal issues are very common uh, in brachycephalic dogs. So you can have disc disease, uh, you can have hemivertebrae, uh, you can have subarachnoid cysts, Uh, you can have degenerative myelopathy. And you can have congenital stenosis of the canal. And so most of these can be treated surgically with at least some benefit, um, but uh, but some of the other ones, you're going to have more chronic um, uh, clinical signs and surgery, particularly surgery that's, uh, uh, if you do a, a dorsal laminectomy for hemivertebrae, can result in permanent paralysis. And I've had that happen in a couple of patients. So I'll go ahead and leave it at that. That's a quick little update on management of brachycephalic airway disease. It, um, and uh, so this is going on the members only channel. On the live stream, it is available to everybody. But as soon as I'm finished with the live stream and can get over to my computer, I'm going to switch it over to members only. And um, so I would really encourage you to join the membership because this is going to, uh, these types of short stories are going to be presented very frequently and you'll get a lot of clinical insight that you wouldn't get otherwise. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again soon.